I'm reading from How to Steal a Dragon Sword, which is the ninth book in my How to Train Your Dragon series. And this is the beginning of the first chapter. The greatest day of your life, not. One long ago winter's midnight, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III awoke with a frightened start. Despite being the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, Hiccup was a gangly, skinny, ordinary looking boy with the kind of face that was easy to overlook in a crowd. To tell the truth, he had not been sleeping very well. It is difficult to sleep well if one's bed is a hammock suspended three quarters of the way up, angry mountain. The hard way of Angry Mountain is a cliff so high that it takes two nights and two days to climb it. It is so vertical that a climber has to hammer in a couple of nails and spend that night sleeping uneasily in a hammock hung precariously from the shiny rock. Hiccup's riding dragon, the Windwalker, sleeping on a little shelf of rock a couple of feet away, was supposed to be looking out for danger. However, it was still winter at the Windwalker's hibernation time, so he was barely even awake in the daytime, and now that it was night, he was sleeping so soundly, he might as well have been dead. His long, untidy body sprawled messily on the ledge, snoring as loudly as a cow with a cold. Anything dangerous would have had to have come right up and sit on his head before he'd take any notice whatsoever. Toothless, Hiccup's tiny, selfish, common or garden hunting dragon had not noticed anything either. He was fast asleep on Hiccup's chest, sending out smoke rings that filled the hammock. But it was danger that woke Hiccup up. He was sure of it. Hiccup's heart was pumping like a jack-in-a-box, and he was suddenly wildly awake, for with every fibre of his being, he sensed danger, danger all around him. Have you got a secret love for mythical creatures? Yes, I love the idea of a creature that could possibly be real. It's this fantastical, mythical creature that you can use your imagination in order to sort of think what it might be like, but it's that tantalising possibility that it could be real. Have you used any of the stories that your father used to tell you in your books? Yes, I have. Um, when I was little, I spent a lot of time on a, on a tiny uninhabited island off the west coast of Scotland. And there was literally, there was one house on the island. There was no electricity, no shops, no telly. So my dad used to read us a lot of stories. And the stories were about the islands round about. This was in the Inner Hebrides on the west coast of Scotland. And so there were local tales told by people for, for generations to each other over the years. A lot of them did involve dragons. And that's what comes out in, my, in the books that I write now, I think. Other than The Secret Island in Scotland, what else inspired you to write all your amazing books? The starting point for my books was imagining a real a Viking world in which dragons really were real. And then I get very inspired also by, by people I know, I suppose I shouldn't <laughs> say who they are. <laughs> but I was also interested in telling a story about um, uh, children and their parents. Yes. Yes. And, and so those were the, the things that came together. We know there are nine books in the Hiccup series, the ninth one is coming out later this year. Yes. Um, but this you, one. Yes. How to yes. Steal a Dragon Sword. Yes. But do you think there'll be any more? Yes, there will. There'll be <laughs> at least one more. I mean, this, this one ends on quite a cliffhanger, actually. It, it's, um, uh, yes, and so there's, there's definitely going to be at least one more and I also don't quite know whether I can finish the story in one book so it might be two two more books yeah. um, but but yes it, it does have a sort of an ending which I'm very sad about because I love the world yeah. and I love writing about it but it felt like a story that that needed to have an ending. Do your children ever ever dream of becoming famous authors like you? I've got three children um, and all of them love writing and drawing and I don't know I mean they're still very young the oldest is 13 who knows but um, they do suggest ideas for things in the books as well and in fact I, I wrote one of the characters 
uh, Kamikaze, who's a girl character. I wrote it because my daughter, my eldest daughter, wanted that character in the book. That's so um, nice of you. <laughs> so yes, they do read the books and they do make suggestions. And I do listen mm. sometimes. <laughs> um, like you said earlier on, um, you grew up without watching television during your summer holidays and when you lived on the island and stuff. Yeah. But children spend lots of time watching t television nowadays. Um, do you think having a break from TV was really important in helping you become an author and to read more books? The answer is yes. I think being bored is quite important because it makes you be creative. It makes you make up games and think of ways of, to entertain yourself and it makes you creative. You know, makes it, it's good for making you make things up to be bored. So I think, I think having some time away from the television you know, is, very, is quite important. But the other thing is, is I think it's quite important not to do so many clubs and, and to do some clubs and things, but to do, have so much time that is to do with clubs and to do with, you know, organised time and to have some time to make things up. Which do you enjoy more, writing picture books or writing books for older children? A baby knows so little, you know, they have, <laughs> you know they're so, it's quite limited what you can write about. So you have to be very clever about what you write. So it's not necessarily easier writing picture books. Um, but I love writing for older children just because you can do more in, in, in writing for older children, yeah. Um, to you, what makes more sense, to study, study illustration and art or to go straight into writing and, you know, publishing and stuff like that? I studied writing and I went to art school. Um, and it depends on what you want to do. Um, I mean, I write and I illustrate. Um, and so I suppose I think that both of those things are as important as each other. But I would say I was probably a writer first um, and then an illustrator second. Whereas some people draw an illustration first, they'll draw a little, little character first and then they'll make up a story about the, uh, about the character. I'm somebody who definitely creates, who does the writing first and then I draw afterwards. People think in very different ways uh, and some people are more visual people so they have to start with a with a drawing to give them ideas I mean, sometimes if I get stuck I will draw a character that will then give me an idea for that character um, you know for what they're going to be like so I, I, I will sometimes draw or a picture of the of, of the world that he if he's going to go in some cave if my hero is going to go in some cave I would draw that cave to give me an idea of what the cave looked like and to help me with the story so I I will use the, you know, the drawing to help me through the story as well. Are the other books in the Hiccup series going to be films as well? And would you like them to be? There's going to be three Hiccup films. And, and there are ten, or if not eleven, Hiccup books. The film is slightly different from the books because it sort of has to be. Because if you've written a ten book series, um, you know, and, and there's going to be f three films, there's obviously going to be differences but I absolutely love the film so I am very happy that they're making three of them. Have you, have you seen the film? No I have to admit I haven't it's seen the film however film. the book is still very good. <laughs> oh <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you sweetie. If you could have a superpower what would it be? A superpower? There's so many great superpowers how can I choose one? Um, Ah, uh, superpower. Oh, flying is a good one. Invisibility is good. That's a bit sneaky, but invisibility is good. I think flying is great. And what's the thing where you can move objects? In fact, I'd love so many. I'd love superpowers. Um, uh, yes, moving things around the room. If I was a child, I would definitely have, cho have chosen to fly. And maybe that's another reason why I wrote about dragons, is it's the idea of you know, getting on a dragon's back and being able to fly. And that's what they can do in the film so beautifully, is that you can show the flying. It really is like you're flying on the back of a dragon. If I was to choose one, I think I would have to be flying, I think probably. If you wasn't a writer, what would you be? <laughs> I'd like to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> and I think it would be quite scary, I mean, very scary, don't you think it would be quite scary? But it would be so exciting to stand up in front of a live audience and make them laugh, hopefully. If you were to be a stand-up comedian, 
and you made a joke, but no one laughed at it. Oh, How yeah. would you feel? You have to be quite self-confident because some people are not going to like what you, you know, your joke, or not going to laugh at your joke, or they're not going to like your writing. But you have to have that, you know, inner belief that it is funny anyway, um, or that your writing is good anyway. You know, you have to have that, I think, to be a writer or a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. because not, you know, that's, you know, not everybody isn't always going to. Think that your writing is is marvelous, or your or your joke is funny. Yeah. So I think you just have to take that. That's one of the that's one of the things about um, about being a writer. Thank you, Christina, for answering my questions. And no problem. It was a great honour to meet you today. Oh, thank <laughs> you. It was lovely to meet you too.